What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to This Week in Esports and Gaming for the fourth week of September 2022. I'm your host, Mark. Hi, we have a lot of news to talk about this week, a lot of spicy news, so let's dive right into it. For our first top three story, the G2 Esports former CEO, Carlos Rodriguez, is now no longer the CEO. So let's just talk through this story a little bit here, um, and, and I'm going to break down the details bit by bit for you, and then we can discuss a little bit there. So on September 17th, Carlos posted a video of him partying with Andrew Tate, who is a very controversial figure who has been known to promote you know misogynistic views against women, and has been since banned off of many social media platforms. Um, Carlos then doubled down on the same day, basically saying, I party with whoever I want, this is where I draw the line, which got lots of negative responses response from many people in the gaming esports space due to Andrew Tate's reputation, right? And on September 18th, one day later, Carlos quote-unquote apologized via a tweet that was evidently written by someone else from G2, um, and the board and the company announced that he's taking two months without pay as a CEO. So now while this was happening, he was liking tweets of people supporting him and his actions, which is a little bit against what the company was saying, and, and which, you know, this could have been it. This could have been the whole thing, but it coincided with Riot Games' large announcement of new Valorant partners, of which G2 Esports was not included on, probably large and you know in part largely due to his actions here so riot games most likely thought this was too controversial and didn't want to be involved nor contradict their own values as a company for inclusivity and you know looking out for the community and a few days later the board and investors at g2 most likely told carlos he'd have to step down from g2 as ceo so he's now resigned from g2 as a ceo he posted a video himself saying he's no longer affiliated with g2 esports and there's a great video by devin nash that details a lot more than any of the info i just talked about i think this is a very interesting situation all around regarding pr business models and executive actions right the main point i brought up is that the funding rounds from g2 esports the ones that they went through um resulted in carlos not actually having as much authority as people maybe thought he did even though he's a ceo right and as such a public facing figure um his actions reflect that of the organization directly in which case this was negative because of the video right extremely negative and since the investors in the board have the organization's best interest in mind not necessarily carlos's they believe this would be best for the org and especially after the situation that's put in with other esports players right in valorant um it was said to be that exit players would go to G2 um, and that G2 would be dropping the European roster um, had they you know, I've been able to become a Valorant partner team. Um, that's not the case now because G2 is no longer part of the Riot Games um, ecosystem for Valorant. And so what a situation, that's all I'll say here. Um, you can make your own decision. There's lots of takes out here, lots of opinions, and I'll just let you do that. But I just wanted to break down the situation for, for all of you. For our second story, Twitch is also going through it. So much stuff has happened this last week with Twitch. So let me also just walk you through this one. You once again, probably don't need my opinion because you probably heard a lot about it. But first, they un well, they banned unlicensed gambling sites from being streamed on the platform, which was a huge win for them in PR and the community earlier in this week and right afterwards though this was followed by Twitch lowering the top streamers revenue share from 70 30 all around always to only 70 30 for the first hundred thousand dollars of their revenue and afterwards that means that any money that top streamers earn after hundred thousand dollars will not no longer be 70 30 it'll be 50 50 instead and so this was met with lots of backlash from large creators that basically have been on the platform for so long um, and you know they've supported Twitch throughout and they are the ones who you know have really made made Twitch um, big and basically, you know, they were pretty upset because this is slashing their revenues, you know, 20 to 30%. Um, and Twitch also cited that basically it costs too much money to support um, a lot of the streamers, which is, you know, seemingly a poor business model, but I can't really comment on that. Um, and so this is, the, that's why they justified making this move. Um, after this, also the SVP of global creators at Twitch, Constant Knight, said that she will be leaving Twitch, even though it's, she's only been in position for a little over a year now. Once again, I'm not sure if this is related to the actual, uh, you know creator payout switch um, but the timing is suspect here and then slightly unrelated as well Republican representative Matt Gates from Florida tried streaming on Twitch which did not go well for him at all. You know, given the audience that Twitch has, he peaked at six viewers, six, that's it. Um, and lots of negative messages were being sent to him about his recent news around his sex trafficking probe and also his political views in general. Um, this is just such a wild time for Twitch. They're really not doing hot at all. Um, and it seems that many streamers are seriously considering switching to YouTube as a result. YouTube Shorts monetization announcement as well recently only helps to serve, you know, only serves to help them versus Twitch or even TikTok. So YouTube essentially really just has to wait for Twitch to continue to make more mistakes stakes and ultimately i think that will you know be how they quote unquote win the streaming wars um however this turns out you'll definitely be hearing updates from me the u.s department of homeland security is investing around seven hundred thousand dollars to research extremism in gaming they received a grant of around 700 grand to terrorism and security researchers to see how extremism and gaming relate to one another the department of homeland security press release addresses both the positive and negative aspects of gaming i'll just read some lines directly from the release they say video games have increasingly become focal points of social activity and identity creation 
recreation for adolescents and young adults. Relationships made and fostered within game ecosystems routinely cross over into the real world are impactful units as well of the local communities. Correspondingly, extremists have used video games and targeted commu video game communities for activities ranging from propaganda creation to terrorist mobilization and training as well. Um, they will also aim to develop a set of best practices and centralized resources for the monitoring and evaluation of extremist activities. And they want to develop a series of training workshops for gaming community managers, designers, and developers to better deal with these things if they happen. I honestly think, once again, this is quite interesting and it's not really getting a lot of attention due to the Twitch and, you know, G2 news here. Uh, while I do believe video games are far more beneficial to the average person than harmful, I also understand how, you know, some video games can be negatively impactful to certain individuals as well. And that being said, I'm curious to see what findings they have that link these two topics. I've seen so many politicians in the past talk about how video games are causing shootings or how they're really bad for people. Um, so to me, it's a bit amusing personally, but with actual research behind it, that might be a different case. As far as partnerships go, Team Gold at partner with Philips. Philips One Blade branding will be used on Team Gold's jerseys for the entire year, and the rosters will get Philips products to use. Optic Gaming partner with Dairy Max. This means Dairy Max will be the official nutrition partner of Optic, and will see them promote the benefits of a balanced nutrition diet with dairy products as well. The partnership will also feature other scholastic events and virtual and in-person events. Genji partner with Bose and Puma. For the first partnership, Bose will work with Genji to create online events and experiences for fans, as well as becoming the sponsor of Genji's NBA 2K team. The content series will feature four recording artists talking about the relationship with gaming as well. For the second partnership, Puma will launch a new global collection with Gen G, including the LCK 2022 Summer Champion Team. On-site activations as well as other content will be planned for Gen G with Puma in the US and in Korea. For finance and M&A, Theorycraft Games raised a $50 million Series B. The investment will go towards the development of its first title codenamed Loki, as well as growing its internal team. The studio has folks that have worked at Blizzard, Bungie, Riot, and Valve, so they evidently have lots of game dev experience. Keyword Studios are going to acquire Smoking Gun. Smoking Gun has released titles like Age of Empires Castle Siege, Phobies, as well as Free Fall Racers. Keyword Studios says its acquisition will continue its plan to expand its game development and live operation services. Scenery raised $1.5 million. The round was led by Snow Ventures with the funding going towards its development. And for reference, Scenery is currently creating a no-code gaming development platform for desktop and mobile devices. Digital Confectioners have received investment from Tencent. For reference, Digital Confectioners has developed titles like Dread Hunger, Last Tide, and Depth. The investment will not change how the company operates, but will help digital confectioners with more insights such as the introduction to the China market as well as how to engage players better there as well. As far as workforce changes go, Scott Bednarski has joined Sony Interactive Entertainment as a marketing program manager. He's been in gaming and esports for quite a while now, first starting as a pro player for Counter-Strike. He was most recently the global marketing director for Repeat.gg and now joined Sony as Repeat.gg was acquired by Sony. He graduated from Marist College Ashgrove. Marcus Graham has joined Fortis Games as the VP of Community Development. He's one of the OGs of Twitch and has done so much for gaming, content creation, and esports in the past 20 years. He spent 11 years at Twitch where he was most recently the head of creator development, and he holds a bachelor's degree in computer science and broadcast arts from the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. Andrew Rayner joins Gearbox Entertainment as the Global Creative Executive Officer. He spent the last 27 years at Game Informer as the editor-in-chief of the magazine, where he cemented his reputation in the gaming space. I'm excited to see how he pushes Gearbox to the next level. He holds a degree in advertising, art, and design from Hennepin Technical College. Elizabeth Laverso has been promoted to the Managing Director at Red Storm Entertainment. She has over 28 years of experience in production and talent management, working with Red Storm Entertainment for 23 of those 28 years. She's done external development, operations, and production development at Red Storm, and she holds a bachelor's degree in communications from Appalachian State University. Steven Stagliano has been promoted to the Commercial Partnership Manager for Riot Games. He has been with Riot for now about six years now, doing partnerships most recently as well, working in a variety of esports events roles in the past as well. He's done sales roles in the past and was a teacher as well in his previous life. He holds a bachelor's degree in the history teacher education from Illinois State University. Jerrica Romero has been promoted to the associate creator relations manager at Epic Games. She's been with Epic Games for nearly a year at this point, working on creator and influencer marketing. She was first an intern for six months before being promoted to creator relations associate and now her current role. She's also worked with Loaded in the past doing social media and holds an associate degree in art studies from Miami Dade College. Alex Barnett has been promoted to the associate project manager at Insomniac Games. He just got converted from his internship that I was doing for the past three months where he worked on Marvel Spider-Man 2. He's been involved in esports and gaming in the past with his school Champlain College where he holds a bachelor's degree in game production management from as well. Kristen Tormey has been promoted to the Director of Social Media and Digital Engagement at Wendy's. She's been with Wendy's for about five years now and was most recently the Manager of Social Media and Gaming at the company for the last two years and nine months. She's done a variety of social media and client-facing roles in the past and holds a bachelor's degree from Indiana University Bloomington. And last but not least, Trombone Champ. That's it. You just have to check out Trombone Champ. It's just a really fun game where you play trombone notes. There's been so much coverage about it on social media and it seems like such a fun game to play. And even the creator of the game, Dan Vecchetto, said more games need to go all out comedy, so he knows what's up. 
That's it for this week in esports and gaming. Thank you so much for tuning in. Credit to the authors and the brands themselves for the images and information provided. Once again, shout out to James Fudge for all the research he does on the people on the move. And once again, everybody, have a great day.